UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres calls for urgent action ahead of day one at the COP27 climate conference in Egypt. A day into the COP27 summit in Egypt. Human Rights Watch raises concerns over protester arrests and participants' right to privacy. The fierce battle for Ukraine's eastern front rages on as Moscow warns residents in Russian-held Kherson that a counter-attack is imminent. More ships carrying migrants rescued from the Mediterranean Sea arrive in Italy's ports, but only the most vulnerable are taken in. U.S. President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump are on the campaign trail ahead of their country's critical midterm election on Tuesday. Extreme temperatures, wildfires, drought and flooding are all being made worse due to rising global temperatures. And the last eight years are on track to be the hottest ever recorded. That's according to a new UN report, which indicates the world is now deep into the climate crisis. As the COP27 climate conference in Egypt gets down to business today, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called for urgent action. As the World Meteorological Organization so, so clearly, change is happening with catastrophic speed, devastating lives and livelihoods on every continent. We must answer the planet's distress signal with action, ambitious, credible climate action. COP27 must be the place and now must be the time. More than 120 heads of state and government leaders are attending the 13-day conference. Today they're expected to outline hopes to slash greenhouse gases and smooth the transition to renewable energy. China's President Xi Jinping and Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India are not expected to attend casting doubt on whether the talks could lead to any major breakthrough without two of the world's biggest polluters. International NGO Human Rights Watch says Egyptian authorities have arrested dozens of people in recent days who have been calling for their right to protest the COP27 summit. Among the arrests, Indian climate change activist Ajit Rajagopal, who set off on an eight-day walk from Cairo to the tourist resort of Sham el Sheikh. He was released the next day after international criticism. The NGO says authorities have ordered cameras to be placed in all taxis in the area to monitor passengers and drivers to limit public participation. And that the government requires attendees to download an app collecting personal information as well as access to the camera, microphone and location service of a mobile phone, raising concerns of participants' right to privacy. According to international law, everyone has the right to free, active and meaningful participation in public affairs. There's been further destruction in Donetsk as Russian forces step up their strikes in the fierce battle for Ukraine's eastern region. Meanwhile, in the Russian-occupied city of Kherson, Reports suggest residents are receiving warnings from the Russian military on their phones about an imminent Ukrainian attack. Moscow has already forcibly evacuated many civilians from the city as Ukrainian troops push on with a counter-offensive to retake it. Ukraine has been pushing forward in the south, while Russia has intensified its assault on Kyiv. Ukraine's forces say they're soon expecting the order to advance towards Kherson. And analysts agree, indicating that the rapidly deteriorating weather is starting to turn the soil into an impenetrable layer of mud. Russia's defense ministry has published footage of what it describes as mobilized personnel continuing their training in Siberia. The troops are said to be part of September's nationwide call-up by President Vladimir Putin, who claimed they were needed to protect Russia's sovereignty. Relatives in Russian-held Donetsk welcomed the return of servicemen who fought for Russia. That's after they were freed in a prisoner swap with the Ukrainian military. Migrants on board a Norwegian flagship cheered as the vessel arrived in Sicily's eastern port city of Catania, but most were prevented from stepping foot on Italian soil. 
the Red Cross brought food and water to the ship, carrying over 500 migrants rescued from the Mediterranean Sea. But only the most vulnerable were allowed to disembark. The moment the people that is remaining behind without disembarkation, we don't know what's going to happen. We haven't received any further instructions to what, what is the, the situation with them. Over the weekend, Italian authorities only allowed vulnerable migrants aboard a German search and rescue ship to disembark before ordering the boat to leave port. The government is refusing safe docking to four ships operating in the central Mediterranean that have rescued migrants in distress. Charities have slammed Rome's decision to order the ships back into international waters. U.S. President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump are on the campaign trail ahead of their country's critical midterm election on Tuesday, which will be the United States' first national election since the infamous Capitol Hill riots almost two years ago, the legacy of which has hung over the country ever since. With these election deniers, there are only two outcomes for any election. Either they win or they were cheated. No, I'm serious. Think about it. But let me tell you something. You can't only love the country when you win. While Biden was in New York, Trump was in Miami, Florida, where he alluded to a possible run for re-election in the 2024 presidential race, a campaign that he's widely expected to launch this month. In order to make our country successful, safe, and glorious, I will probably have to do it again, but stay tuned. The results of Tuesday's election could dramatically impact the last two years of Biden's presidency and how Washington responds to issues such as abortion rights, rising economic turmoil and the war in Ukraine. Thousands of ethnic Serbs have rallied in Kosovo over the region's ongoing dispute over vehicle license plates. The country is attempting to gradually ban Serbia-issued plates a move that has angered many in its Serbian community who do not recognize the former province's independence. Some walked out of their jobs in protest, vowing not to work until the decision was overturned. Apple customers are going to have to wait to get its latest iPhone, as a factory in China is dealing with COVID-19 restrictions. The factory in Jinzhou in central China is operating at significantly reduced capacity as it experiences a virus outbreak. The disruption is affecting the iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max shipments ahead of the holiday season. Inhabitants of this residential building in Madrid have just installed 76 solar panels on their roof. The clean energy that's generated will help them power the lights, lifts and garage gates of their complex. Energy prices have soared globally. But these residents insist that saving money was not their primary motivation. The main idea was to consume renewable energy. But what has happened is that when the time to invest arrived in 2022, that decision was even more clear, precisely because of the rise of energy costs. Spain has seen an explosion in off-the-grid installations as consumers and companies look for ways to cut their dependency on the global energy market. We are experiencing a real boom in electricity self-consumption, with an avalanche of project requests and installations regarding collective grids on residential buildings in cities like this one where we are. We are receiving four times more project requests than last year. Collective solar installations in residential buildings like this one can save up to 40% of the residents' electricity bills. The addition of battery storage could help residents save up to 60% of energy coming from the grid. An economic aid package from Spain's Ecology Transition Ministry, together with EU funds, is subsidizing 40% of the installation costs. The energy prices, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the funding we are putting in place and an increasing environmental awareness, that is making electricity self-consumption become a reality. Spain has received around 160,000 requests for self-consumption grids. With 1.3 billion euros worth of funding, plus another 500 million on the way, 
Consumers hope that should be enough to help Spain take advantage of one of its biggest assets, the sun.